First, the senior Auckland doctor and her belief the murder of a severely disabled woman by her mother could happen again unless adult disability services are improved and caregivers are better supported and better funded. Donella Knox was jailed for four years in December after killing her severely autistic and intellectually disabled daughter, Ruby Knox. The 21-year-old's death, described by a lawyer as the most tragic case he'd ever dealt with, triggered a review of the care provided by the Nelson Marlborough District Health Board. The results of that review were released to Nelson this afternoon, and our reporter, Tracy Neal, was there. A judge described the circumstances of Ruby Knox's death as complex and singular, a once-in-a-generation case. While the independent report released today found no fault with the teams of health board staff involved in Ruby's care, it identified a series of systematic service failures contributed to the 21-year-old's death. Auckland paediatrician Rosemary Marks conducted the review. She says systemic problems with disability support and poorly funded caregiver services had a bearing on the outcome. Carer support days are allocated, so that's up to a 24-hour period of care funded. The amount is around $75 a day. If you divide 75 by 24, it's just over $3 an hour. Solo mother Danella Knox says she was stressed, exhausted and unable to cope after 20 years constant care of her high-needs daughter. In May 2016, soon after a second threat to authorities, Donella Knox might do something to Ruby, she finally did. Danella gave Ruby sedatives and suffocated her, then went to police and admitted her actions. In a packed and silent court in Blenheim late last year, Justice Joe Williams gave his verdict. Ms Knox, as I've said, there's no doubt that you genuinely believe there was no other option but to end Ruby's life. You struggled for 20 years to seek medical help for Ruby. And while you had some successes in alleviating her pain, you had lots of failures and, as the doctors have reflected, she was never really fully diagnosed. Ruby was severely autistic and intellectually disabled. She also had spina bifida and suffered from reflux and incontinence. Dr Mark says while Ruby's high needs meant she received support from multiple health services, those services failed to communicate to each other. As somebody who sees children with disability and has been seeing them for over 30 years in Auckland, it's certainly larger than any of the packages I've seen of care and support. Danella Knox is described in the report as not trusting the care services to look after Ruby better than she could. Nelson Marlborough Chief Medical Officer and Paediatrician Dr Nick Baker says a gap exists in the transition from child to adult services for young people like Ruby. Probably one of our biggest ongoing challenges which has actually been picked up well, it's picked up in various places nationally, but specifically by the South Island Child Health Alliance and locally, is how do we make sure there is no gap between child services and adult services? Dr Baker says a priority will be finding a way to smooth that transition. Unfortunately, there's a tendency to have age cut-offs. Mm. And if all services cut off at the same age, rightly, families feel abandoned. So for success of transition, you need a continuity across it so that it is more of a ramp than a cliff. Dr Mark's report includes a list of recommendations. She says what happened will also serve as a learning curve for other DHBs. It's essential that other DHBs have the opportunity to learn from the experience here and to implement their own changes. Dr Baker says it's important families in need are aware there is support available whether that's going to someone they trust in their current care team or going to the general practitioner or ringing a telephone helpline, always seek help, don't bottle it up. And if the first service they don't go to doesn't meet their needs, try elsewhere. Dr Marks hopes the Enabling Good Lives project and the current cross-sectoral pilot project in Auckland will result in better outcomes for people like Ruby of all ages and their families. Donella Knox is seven months into a four-year sentence for her daughter's murder. In Nelson for Checkpoint, Tracy Neal.